Hello and welcome to my new video series of how Music Kraken works. Today I will start with the interface. The interface has basically two main screens. So this is the editing screen and if I go over here, this is the main screen where you interact with things. In this area you make the music, you interact with the app to generate sounds and control things and in the editor screen you create the setup, you connect the modules, you create new modules that can be used on the main screen. So let's start on the editing screen. Here you can move everything around, you can zoom in and out, you can drag all these notes around, tap them to select them, then you see a menu with a delete button, there will probably be a clone button, maybe more buttons in the future, but so far you can just delete them here. You can also create new modules, you can connect them, you can uh, well, delete these connections and then create them again by dragging, but I'll show more about this later. If you go over to the main screen, you can play the sounds uh, on, the, on the different uh, panels, uh, interact with the input panels. On top of here there are like different small panels that show information about the different sensors. For example, here's the motion sensor. If I Move it around, you can see these changes, and so you know which values are there. Mostly visual information, but you can also interact with, for example, the slider here, but usually not much interaction on top of you. You can change the place of these by dragging them around, as long as you don't touch the area where the buttons are or the slider. And you can also do this here. Uh, you can here you can change place, and if you tap them here select a different panel down here. Over here there is a split screen button. If you push it then it splits the screen in different ways and to change place of these panels you can just get this here and drag it over and now you can interact with them simultaneously. So you can use two different um, keyboards, um, chord pad, touch pad, whatever, simultaneously. Then let's get back to the editing screen. On top here there is the file menu button. You can load projects, save them, create a new project, share files. Click on load. Uh, here is the local files. In uh, iOS you can save and load the files on iCloud. And then there are some examples. The examples that show up here depend on what hardware you have. So if you have a device that doesn't support any of these, uh, the example will not show up here. I don't have that many examples so far because it's a bit difficult to... It really depends on what the user wants and it's difficult to generate something that really is useful for the user. As an example, because it's easier to just create it so Maybe I will um, add some wizards in the future or something like that. But maybe more examples might help. Um, so you can load it like this. Here I can share the file. If I click here, um, I can export a project file which can be shared between iOS and Android or different devices. The Depending on which hardware you have, it might be that one of the modules is grayed out because not all devices have all hardware that Music Kraken supports. But now let's create a new project. Tap here and it says uh, you want to replace the active setup. And yes, so everything is gone now. Also over here it's clean. So, to create new modules, tap on the plus button here and here are the inputs, outputs and effects. To make a useful setup, you at least need one input and at least one output and connect them, otherwise nothing's gonna happen. You can add as many inputs and outputs as you want, you can add multiple effects and combine them anyway. So for now I just will start with a simple example. I will create a keyboard. So now you can see there is a keyboard but it doesn't do anything. That's because 
There's no output and it doesn't send events there. So let's create an output. For example, let's create the audio unit so I can show it here directly on the screen. Um, select one and now this is loaded, but it still doesn't do anything because I haven't connected them. So to connect these two, drag it over here and now it's connected and it should play. What I did here is to connect two orange ports and the orange ports are MIDI ports. MIDI can be used to send different events. The simplest example is the note on and note off events. So for example, if I push this key, it sends a note on event and if I release it again, it sends a note off event. So uh, these events like walk over here and this instrument knows, okay, there is a been a note on event on note number 60, for example, and then it knows, okay, I have to play this note, I create music and okay, there's a note off event, stop it again. So yeah, note on, note off, note on, note off, so on. There are a lot more possible events that can be sent by MIDI. This is just a simple scale with notes. Um, to create something more complex, I can, for example, connect a green port with an orange port. And the green ports, they send numerical values. So for example, the slides, uh, X and Y direction they send, and it's disconnect this, they send an event like where I am at the moment sliding on the key. So if I connect these two, it will automatically generate a value to MIDI converter. And here I can define what should happen with this value, how it should be converted. I have the input range, which depends on what kind of green port I have, but it will automatically be set to a useful range if I connect it like this. And here I can select, should I want to generate control change events? Do I want to create note events, channel pressure, mid pitch bend? For example, notes is the easiest way to demonstrate this. Uh, you can now generate notes, make music by sliding on the key. Probably not the most useful thing, but you can create whatever you want here. Uh, it can be fun to play different instruments simultaneously with different keys and sliding on them. The usual thing you would do here is to select control change. It's also default, let's create a new one. If I connect these, now default is control change modulation and modulation is the mod wheel on your keyboard, for example, also sends modulation events. So when I play here now, you can hear the vibrato going on, depends on the instrument you're using, what happens. So um, you can control these things while playing. Uh, there is uh, the X slide, Y slide. There's also radius, which can be used with the finger. Um, so depends on the device you're using. If it, there's any support for the radius or there's also some devices that support pressure. And the green ports exist mostly on input ports, uh, input ports like hand track, for example, has the hand position and uh, open and close. It can be used to control things. Uh, motion sensors, as I explained before, has uh, how devices rotated. You can use game controllers to control these things. And all of them have these green output ports that can be used with value to MIDI converters. And now, um, if I wanted to Add an effect, for example, I could add a, let's say a transposer, which can be connected like this in between. So the MIDI go through here, then it gets been transposed by one octave. And now it should be one octave higher than when I send it directly. And there are a lot of different effects that can be used with MIDI or with uh, green values, some of them. Yeah, uh, there's some explanation here, uh, or otherwise go to my webpage and then you will see more detailed explanation of what you can do with this.
up here there is the project notes button. I probably will move this button somewhere else in the future because it's not that important to be on the main screen. But um, it's useful because you can enter any comments uh, here and it will show up when you save the project. It will show up uh, over here and it will give you a summary of uh, what's actually in the project, what it does. For example, all these uh, texts here, they're done like this. Then there is the general settings button. And here you can, for example, change the language. So far there's only English and German because uh, these are the only two languages that I can translate myself. Um, there might be more languages in the future, but first I have to clean everything up a bit and yeah, make it easier for translators. Um, there is a timeline setting which can be used. Now you see this one here. Um, it can be used to synchronize multiple arpeggiators, for example. So if at one timeline you can play it here and set the tempo and then it will synchronize multiple arpeggiators to have the same beat and also can be used together with all units on iOS to drive them. Some of them need a timeline from the app. So you can synchronize everything up here. Um, the next on iOS only so far, but there will be probably a button like this on Android soon as well. You can also activate the camera image and what this does, um, it doesn't show anything yet until I have an input that actually uses the camera. And now hand tracking um, will show what the camera actually sees and it's easier to demonstrate, especially for body, full body tracking, it's very useful to see what happens and also see if it doesn't work or something like that. I put these two settings here because there's only, there can only be one so far of these and they don't have any input and output ports so it doesn't make sense to add them to the add menu but maybe in the future we'll change this, not sure yet. Then there is the background audio setting. This allows you to use the app in the background. This will use a lot of battery in the background so make sure to kill the app when you don't need it anymore or just set this back again, disable it. Background audio allows you to use the sounds or generally music in the background so you can use at least some of the inputs like motion sensors, uh, some Bluetooth devices, uh, uh, Apple watches, things like that can be used in the background or you can route MIDI event through music rock and use the effects, send it back to the app. On iOS there's also defer system gestures on edges, uh, which is because of this thing here. Um, the reason is usually if you light up like this the app vanishes, which is a bit stupid if you playing keyboard and you're sliding and bong, it's gone. So um, usually you have to go twice here to get out of the app. But if you don't want to use the keyboard or prefer to switch the apps quicker, just disable it and now only once is needed. So this was a general overview of the interface. There will hopefully be more videos like this in the future where we'll explain some of these uh, effects, input modules and so on. Uh, I think the next one will be a keyboard because you can do a lot with this. Uh, it's not just a simple keyboard anymore. Hope you like Musikröcken. If you have any questions, send me a mail or write it down here in the comments. Thanks.